Welcome back. Uh, today we'll be looking at how to install a Loki on your Kubernetes environment using Helm. We'll be using Promptail as our agent, uh, the tool that will be collecting logs from our pods. Loki will be our main aggregator tool and then we'll be able to visualize it uh, in our Grafana. One thing to note about Loki, it's open source and uh, what it does different from other logging tools, it's just it just indexes the label parts of it. Unlike Elk, which indexes the whole log uh, values, this makes it uh, resource efficient. Loki can be deployed in uh, three different formats. There's the monolithic, microservice, and simple scalable. In monolithic, uh, the components are run as a single process in a single uh, binary. The next is the microservice mode where all the components are run as a distinct process, making it uh, exponentially scalable. The most common one is the simple scalable where all common components, that is the read and writes, are separated and this makes it also uh, scalable. We'll start by adding the Grafana repo into our Helm configuration. I'll create a Loki value file and then in this value file I'll uh, paste these configs. Okay, let's go through some important parts of this uh, config. Uh, the first one is the store, which is TSDB, that is Time Series Database. Uh, previously, it was Bolt DB, but it has been changed to this to use the same as uh, what Prometheus used. The second part, Object Store, S3. Uh, you can use any other options that you prefer. We have uh, Google Cloud Storage. There's also Azure Blob Storage file system, which is used for small logs. You can use the Apache, Apache uh, Cassandra database. You can use a big table that is a Google Cloud big table. You can use the Amazon DynamoDB. All these are options that you can use. The other part is the ingester. Ingester, you, it's on the right path and uh, it uses different uh, algorithms uh, for compression of the logs. There are different choices that you can use uh, apart from Snappy. There's gzip, lz4, zstd. All these are all different configurations that you can uh, put under uh, chunking and coding. The other critical part is deployment mode. Uh, since you're using simple scalable, you'll just put that config simple scalable. Other alternatives that you can use are single binary and uh, distributed for fully microservice Loki. Then I will put the replicas uh, to three. Uh, it has to be more than one. Then the rest will put to zero because we don't need them uh, at the moment. Then finally deploy them to Loki, pointing to this uh, config file. The reason we need more than one replica is because Promptail will complain if you try to deploy one. And after you have done uh, the deployment using Helm, just check all the services and ports are up. The next thing that you're going to deploy is Promptail. Promptail will be our agent uh, for collecting logs in the pod. First thing to check is the client's uh, URL in uh, Promptail to make sure it's pointing to our Loki. After we've deployed our prompt tail, uh, we can go on the logs and check and see uh, what's happening. From this, you can see we are getting a 401 error. This is because Loki needed authentication before it receives logs. What we can do is we can go back to Loki and then uh, disable authentication and then come and restart uh, Promptail daemon set. And then we'll see.
Mm, after you've confirmed Promptel uh, is running okay and it's able to send logs to Loki, the next thing is uh, to set up Grafana. By default, uh, Persistent is disabled. That means uh, you cannot be able to save your dashboards, but you can be able to enable it uh, if you need. In our case, uh, I won't enable it at the moment. After Grafana is up, I'll use this command to get the password. Uh, by default, the username is admin. Uh, this will enable us to log in into Grafana dashboard and uh, point it to Loki for us to be able to view the logs. After I'll do a port forward of uh, Grafana to be able to access the portal, uh, you can be able to map this on uh, an ingress or a load balancer so that you're able to access it permanently, but for now I'll just do it temporarily. Once I'm in, I'll uh, add uh, data connection and my source will be lucky. From there, I'll be able to put uh, the URL path, uh, that is the connection to Loki. Loki has its own query language called uh, LockQL, which stands for Log Query Language. LockQL uses uh, labels and operators to be able to filter logs, and there are two types of LockQL. Log there's uh, log queries, which returns the content of the log lines, and then there's uh, metric queries that extend log queries to calculate value based on the query results. There's a lot that you can do here. I won't get into it for now, but uh, this marks the end of uh, the installation part of it.